Greetings and welcome to the R. Kelly Appeal TV. And we're going to discuss topics relating to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And as we know right now that the R. Kelly sentencing in New York has been delayed, I think, until June 29th. Um, they're projecting what's going on with the District of Illinois um, Chicago trial. And so I have a an excerpt to let you listen to let you listen to so you'll understand what's going on. Um, this is an article from May 20th, which was yesterday. Um, the article written was by Jason Meisner and Megan Crepe at 2.39 p.m. Okay, this is a Chicago Tribune criminal justice excerpt, so let's listen. With less than two months to go until X Chicago, with less than two months to go until XR and B superstar R. Kelly and two of his former associates go on trial in Chicago, the sparks are starting to fly. But the most recent legal spat hasn't involved prosecutors at all. It's between the defendants. On Wednesday, lawyers for former Kelly manager Daryl McDavid blasted claims by the singer's attorney that there may be a conflict of interest of interest with McDavid's legal team as either woefully uninformed or purposely mendacious. The response also criticized Kelly's lawyer, Jennifer Bonjean, for what they called a disingenuous attempt to link one of McDavid's current attorneys, Vadim Glasman, to famed Chicago defense attorney Edward Jensen, who represented Kelly in his child pornography trial in Cook County in 2008 that ended with an acquittal. Glasman worked for Jensen's law practice from 2012 to 2017, when it was closed due to Jensen's failing health. Jensen died of cancer in 2020. In asking for Kelly and McDavid to be tried separately, Bonjean said parts of the alleged conspiracy between Kelly and McDavid to buy back purported sex tapes occurred in the law offices of Ed Jensen. Bonjean also pointed to an interview Jensen gave to a Chicago Sun-Times columnist in 2019, when he was in the advanced stages of terminal cancer, in which Jensen said Kelly was guilty as hell and that he'd helped keep the singer out of trouble for a decade after his acquittal. Because Glasman arguably owes a duty of loyalty to Kelly because he was a member of the firm that represented Kelly, he is in a conflicted position, Bonjean wrote. This potential conflict may be an actual conflict if Glasman possesses privileged information that he may or can use to the benefit of his client or to the detriment of Mr. Kelly at a joint trial. In response, McDavid's legal team called that assertion disingenuous, insulting, and perhaps worse, pointless. The Sun-Times column, their motion said, admitted that a heavily medicated Jensen was rushed to the hospital shortly after the interview took place and that the interviewer only entered Mr. Jensen's home through false pretenses. For lawful pursuit of truth, the motion by Glasman, Bo Brindley, and Blair Westover stated. The motion also revealed for the first time that the Illinois Attorney Regulation and Disciplinary Commission, which investigates wrongdoing by lawyers, looked into Jensen's statements and the decision was made that Mr. Jensen's license would be unaffected. The back-and-forth motions this week have added to the myriad issues surrounding Kelly's federal case in Chicago, which is set to go to trial August 1st. Kelly is charged with conspiring with longtime associates McDavid and Milton June Brown to rig his 2008 child pornography case and hide years of alleged sexual abuse of underage girls. Kelly, 55, is also facing anywhere from 10 years to life in prison after being convicted September 27th in U.S. District Court in Brooklyn on racketeering conspiracy charges alleging he used his music career to further a criminal enterprise. Other indictments alleging sexual abuse by Kelly brought in Cook County in February 2019 have yet to be scheduled for trial. Kelly, who has been in custody since his arrest in downtown Chicago in July 2019, is currently being held without bond at a federal detention facility in Brooklyn. In other pending motions, Bonjean has asked U.S. District Judge Harry Leinenweber to grant her access to records from a federal investigation first revealed by the Tribune showing that a U.S. Bureau of Prisons officer was suspected of illegally accessing Kelly's recorded phone calls, emails, visitor logs and other restricted information in 2019, when he was housed at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Chicago. Federal investigators said in a search warrant affidavit obtained by the Tribune that the information was then leaked to Tasha Kay, a popular YouTube personality who revealed it publicly in a series of inside scoops on the singer and his tumultuous relationships. No one has been publicly charged as part of that probe, however Bonjean wrote in her motion Monday that she has a good faith basis to believe that the stolen information was also provided to a government informant who may have shared said information with government witnesses at the behest of the government. So what are your thoughts on that article? As we already know, 
R. Ke- Robert Sylvester Kelly's rights have always been violated to the 111th degree of the law since the federal trial began in July, I believe, 2019. So I always wondered how Tasha K got her news and her receipts from within the system. And, you know, there there should be more people going down on the corruption that is going on in the federal institutions. I mean, these are this information should have been confidential for the rights to even have Robert Sylvester Kelly fight for his his freedom. And people are taking this information and they're just doing all kind of stuff with it. So what are your views on that? And um, I also want to talk about how they had the federal trial closed to the public. Now, let's discuss the difference between a closed and an open federal trial. Trying cases within the court of public opinion use the media and the news to normally influence the public support for one side or the other in a court case. So so basically, trying cases within the court of public opinion, using the media and news to influence public support for one side or the other in a case is the reason behind an open trial. So it sounds like all of this was a big problem for Robert Sylvester Kelly First of all, they had a closed federal trial. Why do you think they had a f- closed trial when normally they were, we should be open to a open federal trial? Well, let's look at the difference. Let's discuss the difference between that. A closed federal trial, trying cases within the court of public opinion, using the media and news to influence public support for one side or the other in a court case is a reason for an open trial. You know, like the one Robert Sylvester Kelly had when Geronda Pace was there as an underage individual who was just there supporting him when she should have been in school. Well, this is an open type case, uh, open type federal trial. And it's built, it's built on re, uh, reputation. It wants to build a reputation of a particular party to greatly damage the party, even if they won. So that's the reason for an open case. As we see that this is what has taken place in the 2008 trial. Another reason for the open case is to review high profile clients that generate criminal investigations and have no Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in a court of public opinion, that a high profile case has important implications for balancing the right of the public to scrutinize the judicial process and the right of the participants to a fair trial. That's the other side. That's the other component to the criminal justice system in a federal trial. So, A court of public opinion is where the trial of Robert Sylvester Kelly has always been since the beginning of the indictment. Now, a trial by jury in all criminal prosecutions that's accused is expected to have a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury, a serious offense as that of Robert Sylvester Kelly's case should have had a public televised trial, just like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. When adding up offenses, prosecutors regularly file more than one charge against the defendant, creating a multitude of charges that include lengthy sentencing. In criminal proceedings within a federal court, one may be denied access to the courtroom if a party has an overriding interest, likely to be prejudiced against if the trial closes the proceedings the closure must not be broader than necessary to protect the interests of the party asserting the need for closure. Now, this is according to the Press Enterprise um, Company versus Superior Court Law. However, in this case of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the docu-series had already made the trial that of a public opinion. 
So why wouldn't the court process have remained open to the public so that we could analyze and report testimonies to the charges and convictions that would eventually be set forth by the court? The reason for any court proceeding should be to publicize to determine if the courts use the court use their judgment fairly and consistently to the laws. Okay, we're not able to see that because Robert Sylvester Kelly should actually use this in his defense, in his appeal, because they have not allowed us an opportunity to double check. You know, you have the uh, legislative, executive branch and the judicial branch checking each other. Okay. And if we're going to put public opinion to it, we should be able to check the balances between the court and the laws and the rules and making sure that Robert Sylvester Kelly's um, freedoms are being granted, that the, the laws in which they're using are potentially for what they're stating. What are your views on that? So now we're going to go over the U.S. Let me see here. Now we're going to go over the United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois, Eastern Division, U.S. of America versus Robert Sylvester Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly, Daryl McDavid, Milton Brown, also known as June Brown. So... This is under seal number, Title 18, U.S. Code, Sections 371, 2251A, 2252A, A2, and 2252AB1, and 2422B. We're going to look at the different counts that, and I'm bringing up, I've never talked about June Brown, Daryl McDavid, R. Kelly, um, in this instance, but I believe it's time to bring it up because of the fact that August 1st is going to be the Northern District of Illinois trial. So this is what he's actually facing and a special court, um, a special grand jury charged in or around 1998 or 1999 in Chicago in the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division, Robert Sylvester Kelly, or as known as R. Kelly, defendant herein did knowingly employ, use, persuade, and induce, entice, and coerce a minor, namely minor number one, to engage in sexually explicit conduct for the purpose of producing a visual depiction of such conduct, namely video one, and defendant knew or had reason to know that such visual depictions would be transported in interstate or foreign commerce or mailed or such visual depiction was actually transported in interstate or foreign commerce or mailed. This is in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 2251A, the same as in count two, but the video was number two, and that was the code Section 2251A, and the same in count three, except for this was video three, in violation of Title 18 U.S. Code Section 2251, lowercase a. Same in count four, but it was video four, and the defendant um, said, is stated to have violated Title 18 U.S. Code Section 2251A, the same violation. So the count five, number one, at times material to this indictment, a, Defendant Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as R. Kelly, was a resident of Chicago, Illinois, and was a Grammy award-winning recording artist and record producer. Kelly was the president and manager of several businesses, each located in Chicago in the Northern District of Illinois, to be maintained in furtherance of his musical career, including, but not limited, to Bass Productions Limited and RSK Enterprise LCC, the Kelly Businesses. B. From in or around June 1991 until in or around January 2014, Kelly 
and or more of the Kelly businesses employed defendant Daryl McDavid as a business manager. McDavid was a principal at Winkler and McDavid Limited located in Oak Park, Illinois, as a manager for Kelly McDavid, was involved in producing services to Kelly, which services were in part intended to protect Kelly's image, reputation, and assets in, in the face of actual and potential criminal and civil actions involving individuals who were victims of sexual misconduct by Kelly. C. From at least approximately 1997 to at least approximately June 2018, Milton Brown, also known as June Brown, was employed by Kelly and or one or more of the Kelly businesses. This is what they're alleging. Minor one met Kelly in or around 96 or 97 when minor was approximately 12 or 13 years old. Minor two met Kelly in or around 97 when minor two was around 17 years old. Minor three met Kelly in or around 96 when minor was when minor three was 15 years old. Minor four met Kelly in or around 99 when minor four was approximately 16 years old. Minor five met Kelly in or around 97 or 98 when minor five was approximately 13 or 14 years old. Kelly was born in 1967. Kelly engaged in sexual conduct and sexual acts as those terms are defined in Title 18, United States Code, Section 2246 with minor one, minor two, three, four, and five when they were under the age of 18. Um, between in or around 1998 and in or around 2002, Kelly recorded himself on video engaging in sexual contact and sexual acts with minors, including minor one, two, four, and five. Video one, video two, video three, and video four depict Kelly engaged in sexual conduct and sexual acts with minor one when minor one was under the age of 18. In approximately April 2000, the Illinois Department of Child and Family Services began to investigate whether Kelly was sexually abusing minor number one. On or around June 5, 2002, a grand jury of the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois, returned an indictment charging Kelly in the case of people of the state of Illinois versus Robert Kelly, 02 CR. 14952 Cook County case with 21 counts of child pornography relating to video one and minor one. The case was tried to a was tried to a jury beginning May 20th, 2008, and on June 13th, 2008, Kelly was acquitted of the charges. Beginning in approximately 2000 and continuing to the date to return to this indictment is at Chicago in the Northern District, Illinois, elsewhere. So this was 2008. So Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as R. Kelly and Daryl McDavid, defendants herein did knowingly conspire with each other, individual A and others known and unknown to the grand juries to commit an offense against the United States, namely to knowingly alter, destroy, mutilate, conceal, cover up falsely, make a false entry in any record, document, and tangible object with the intent to impede, obstruct, and influence the investigation and proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction of any department or agency of the United States and in relation to and contemplation of such matter or case in violation of uh, Section 1519. It was part of the conspiracy that Kelly McDavid and others knew of Kelly's sexual conduct and sexual acts with minors and knew that Kelly recorded himself engaging in sexual contact and sexual acts with minors on videotape. It was further part of the conspiracy conspiracy that in approximately 2001, Kelly and McDavid learned that multiple videos depicted Kelly engaging in sexual conduct and sexual acts with minors were missing from Kelly's collection of such videos. It was further part of the conspiracy that in order to conceal and cover up the eggs, existence of videos from investigators, Kelly, McDavid, and others agreed to collect the missing videos that depicted engaged 
uh, sexual conduct and sexual acts with minors. It was further part of the conspiracy that Kelly McDavid and others agreed to pay money and caused money to be paid on Kelly's behalf to victims, witnesses, and others to ensure that they would not cooperate with law enforcement and would conceal and cover up evidence, including videos relating to Kelly's sexual contact and sexual acts with minors, such as the following. A, between 2001 and approximately 2009, Kelly McDavid Kelly, McDavid, Individual A, and others caused Individual B to be paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by obtaining and returning multiple videos that they knew depicted Kelly engaged in sexual contact and sexual acts with the minor. B, in approximately early 2007, Kelly and McDavid agreed to pay minor to approximately 250000 to return a videotape that they knew depicted Kelly engaged in sexual conduct and sexual acts with minor one and two. C, in approximately 2007, Kelly and McDavis paid minor two and individual C each appro approximately 100,000 in exchange for their efforts to return Kelly's videotapes that they knew depicted Kelly engaged in sexual conducts and sexual acts with minor one and two. D, as a condition of being paid many money for returning videotapes that depicted Kelly engaged in sexual contact with minors. Kelly and McDavid directed minor two individual B and individual C to take polygraph exams regarding whether they had returned all the copies of the videotapes. In approximately June 2008, after learning that individual B planned to announce at a press conference that he had recovered videos depicting Kelly engaged in these acts, Kelly, McDavid, and others paid individual 100 Individual B, approximately 170000 to cancel a press conference. It was further part of the conspiracy that Kelly McDavid and other agreed to intimidate, threaten, pressure um, minor one, minor one's parents, minor two, and minor five to falsely and make a false entry in a record document a tangible object um, related to sexual uh, to Kelly's sexual contact and sexual acts with minors, such as the following. December 2000, pursuant to instructions that Minor One received from Kelly, Minor One false, so falsified and caused a false entry to be made in the police report when Minor One denied to law enforcement officers that Kelly had engaged in relationship with Minor One. This is how, this is not going to stand here because when you falsify, you corrupt everything you said prior to that in any criminal justice proceeding. You can't be... You can't be um, used as a credible witness, you know, and if you're talking about putting someone on on a, a life sentence, we need to know that that this is going to be legit information. So, you know, they're not talking about this is just the raw information from the District of Illinois. What has been said what has been reported, what has been charged, and, you know, even with falsification in this document, as we can tell that, you know, um, listening to the article before this one, we see that we cannot have McDavid and R. Kelly together in the same trial proceeding. That's not going to work. That's not going to work because they're going to falsify um they're 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 going to look at this information this this information and accuse both of them for whatever you know it, this is just really 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 sad um because all these acts the trial everything was done completed in 2008 and they re you can't be tried for the same crime twice. You can't be tried in a court of law for the same crime twice. It is called double jeopardy. And that's what this is. And I know most of my Kelly fans, um, the, the R. Kelly nation, we understand this. We definitely do. Um, so it was further part of the conspiracy that Kelly McDavid and others agreed to intimidate, threaten, or persuade um, victims and their families and, and, um, from at least approximately 2000 to 2015, Kelly and McDavid made payments to and bought gifts for minor one, minor one's parents with the intent to persuade and induce minor one and minor one's parents to conceal, cover up, 
falsely and to make false entry in any record document and tangible object about Kelly's relationship. <sighs> the parents sold their children off, but for some reason, we, the, the parents that we are seeing being paid off have no right to do that. They have no right to sell these young women, even though they were their own guardian. So if I sell something that I didn't have the right to sell, whether it be property, whether it be a vehicle, whether it be a person, it's it, that's in itself is called human trafficking. And yes, R. Kelly could be looked at as a victim in this situation because of the fact that, yes, it may have been morally wrong to, you know, be intimate with individuals under the age of 18. Okay, I get that. But to the point where now you're running all over the place, like paying people off and doing all this. He said it from the very beginning. Robert Sylvester Kelly, R. Kelly said it from the beginning. He said that I was building my career. This was coming out and it was cheaper for me to pay off than to have to fight through these allegations because 2008 would have happened a lot, a lot earlier. It would have happened like in whenever the first person threatened him. So, I mean, this is what is happening in the August 1st trial. Um, <clears throat> I really don't want to keep going over it, but let's look at the overt acts. In furtherance of the conspiracy and to accomplish the objectives of the conspiracy, defendants committed one or more overt acts in the Northern District of Illinois, Eastern Dish Division, and elsewhere, which overt acts include, but were not limited to, March or April 2007, McDavid, on Kelly's behalf, received from Minor 2 an individual C, a videotape that McDavid and Kelly knew depicted Kelly engaged in sexual conduct and sexual acts with Minor 1 and Minor 2. And, but they said they could not definitely say that he was the one on the tape. So in approximately March, April 2007, McDavid or Kelly's on Kelly's behalf. Whew, this is a lot. <laughs> I need to take a break. Okay, in approximately March or April 2007, McDavid on Kelly's behalf brought Minor 2 and Individual C to a polygraph examiner and directed that Minor 2 and Individual take exams regarding whether there were additional copies of the video had been returned. Okay. So he paid 30000 September 2008 to Bass Productions Limited check to a father. Okay. And approximately August 13, 2013, Kelly caused Bass Productions Limited to transfer a title of a GMC Yukon Denali to minor one. It just goes on and on and on. Um, 2015, Kelly caused the wire payment to be made from RSK Enterprises, LLC, to Minor One, paying $1,150 with the not notation settlement payment. Although the payment was not made pursuant to a settlement with Kelly. So I think... Um, But you know, when you, when you have an enterprise, when you have a business, you have people you have to pay. So I don't see how they're gonna look at this as actual payments that he paid off as a conspiracy. I don't know, I don't know. Robert Sylvester Kelly, defendants herein, did knowingly conspire with each other, individual A, individual B, and others known and unknown to the grand jurors to receive child porn as defined in section 2256-8A, video two. Count seven, 
in or around 2001 or two at Chicago Northern District. He received the videos. And it goes on to all the charges. Forfeiture allegation. Upon conviction of an offense in violation of 2252A and 2422 is set forth in this indictment, shall forfeit the U.S. of America any matter which contains visual depictions described in Title 18, 2252A, any property constituting and traceable to gross profits and other proceeds obtained from such offense, and any property used and intended to be used to commit and to promote the commission of such offense and any property traceable to such property as provided under the United States Code Section 2253A. Number two, upon conviction, number two, upon conviction of an offense and violation of Title 18, Code 371, as set forth in this indictment, Defendants shall forfeit to the United States of America any property which constitutes and is derived from proceeds traceable to the offense. The property to be forfeit, forfeited includes but is not limited to a personal money judgment in the amount of at least approximately one million five hundred and no one billion five hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred forty eight dollars if any of the property described above as a result of any act or omission by the defendant cannot be located upon the exercise of due diligence has been transferred or sold to or deposited with a third party has been placed beyond the jurisdiction of the court has been diminished in value or has been coming commingled commingled with other property which cannot be divided without difficulty the united states of america shall be entitled to forfeiture of substitute property as provided by title 21 u.s code section 853p so i wanted to read that over to you guys um and i know you probably have heard it all but i wanted to introduce daryl mcdavid june um June Brown, and uh, how all of this is looked at in the Illinois trial coming up August 1st. What are your thoughts? This is very deep. This is very, um, you know, but, but, but people, to give hope to this, people have gotten through worse and come out victoriously. Because this is all just, once everything can be cleared up based on R. Kelly, you know, if he is truly innocent, it will come out, which he is. It will come out that all these things were done and why they were done. So what are your views on that? I know it's very, very dark. It's, it's dark. I just wish that we had paid attention to what was going on in the life of Robert Sylvester Kelly when he was R. Kelly during the 90s. Because this young man was a victim, a victim of sexual exploitation, as well as a victim of not knowing how to handle himself sexually, being a sexual icon and then being able to purchase whatever he wanted to purchase you know, um, through signatures. I mean, I guess he lived his life his way and he did what he needed to do as a young entrepreneur that didn't know the rules and the regulations and the guidelines to the criminal justice system. Maybe he felt that the people in which he was surrounded by was going to protect him um, and show him at least the right way that he should do things. So, yeah, this was a deep one here, but um, thank you for being here, commenting, sharing, subscribing to this channel. This was a deep one, a hard one for me to do. Um, <clears throat> as many are, and we here at R. Kelly Appeal TV really would ask all of the commenters, supporters, 
um, to please keep Robert Sylvester Kelly in a positive light in your mind and know that this too shall pass and all will come out as it should. And also, if you are interested in um, our May 29th, 2022 Cash App Upload Giveaway, please look at the details in the description box below. But yeah, we need to send positive energy to Robert Sylvester Kelly because, you know, he's he's been through a lot. He's gone through a lot and, and he tried to do what was best at the situation once he got in it. And it's just like being emotionally attached to something and say you can't um, control your sexuality. And when you are put in a position, it's like you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. You're handling the situation as it comes to you. And he was very young. I mean, you think about it, 94, from 94 to 2008, um, or even before that to 2000, you know, you figure it out, get, only gave him five years to have all that opportunity to do, be, and have whatever he wanted to have, not knowing that on the other side of that choice was a severity of, you know, thing, things that could haunt him for decades and decades to come. So yeah, we just want to keep him uplifted. Thank you so much. And as always, keep it 100. I know we in limbo. But just keep believing, keep knowing, keep, keep believing he can fly. You know what I mean? Keep believing it. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.